Hey guys, it's Sierra. Um, I know the last few weeks we have been looking at examples of Jesus dealing with either solitude, where he chose to be alone with the Father to pray, or last week we looked at a passage of Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days by himself in isolation. Um, I want to take a pause from that today and just let you know where I'm at right now. Um, it's been an extremely hard couple of weeks just processing grief at things that are going on in our country that have been going on in our country for years. And um, I'm grieving right now. And I think that God is grieving with me. Um, I know that God is a God of justice. And so to see his black and brown children being abused is very hurtful to the Lord. Um, and so I just wanted to take some time today to uh, pray with you guys and to just be honest with you. Um, that lately I've just been feeling very fragile and very vulnerable. And I think it's very interesting that the Lord has led me to passages in scripture where Jesus is in isolation or he feels misunderstood or He's being mocked and ridiculed and called names and excluded. Um, because in a lot of ways, that brings me comfort as a black woman living in America. Um, there are often times when I feel very vulnerable and unsafe and unseen. And so it just gives me great comfort to know that my savior, my king, Jesus, has gone through very similar situations, if not worse, than I've ex experienced. And so right now, even though I'm feeling very hurt and disappointed and very sad, I am declaring God's truth over my life and over this country and over our world. I think that Satan wants us to give into despair. I think Satan thrives off of division and oppression. I think he thrives off of us attacking one another. And I want to give in to that. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to give in to being angry. I want to give in to being afraid and to my sadness. But I know the truth. Yes, I am a black woman. God made me that way. He designed me that way. And I love being black, <laughs> but it's hard. But I also know my real identity as a daughter of Christ, as a child of God, as a citizen of heaven. And so I'm declaring that truth. And I'm holding strongly to that today. And so I'm just, I'm asking you to join me in prayer today. We are just going to lament and cry out to God together. I'm going to pray the scriptures. I'm going to confess the sins of our world. I'm going to confess my own sin. And I'm just going to pray God's justice and peace rain down on us. I'm going to pray that God heals our land. I'm going to pray that God would comfort those who are hurting, who feel vulnerable, who are grieving. I'm asking you to join me in prayer right now as I cry out to God. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Father, we just come to you acknowledging the sin of this world. We know that your heart is grieved and we know that we've had a part to play in that. And so I pray God that you would search our hearts right now. Would you make us aware of your, your justice and your goodness and our lack? Father, I just, I lift up the sins of our country to you right now, God. 
And I pray that you would search our system, search our government, search our schools, search our justice system. Search us, God. Reveal what is not like you, Father, and turn our hearts toward you. Lead us in the way everlasting, Father. In 1 John 1, 9, you say that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, Father, I confess our sins and I just pray, God, that you would forgive us. Forgive us for the way that we have wrongly treated one another. Forgive us for our silence. Forgive us for the oppression. God, forgive us for the, the bitterness and the rage. Father, forgive us for not loving people the way that you would, that you would love us, that you have loved us, that you do love us. God, forgive us. We confess our sins now. Father, not only do we confess our sin, but we repent. We repent. I pray that you would wash us, that you would make us clean. Isaiah 1, 16 and 17 says, wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Father, we repent of our sin. We ask that you would wash us, make us clean. Help us to seek justice and to correct oppression, Father. We ask, God, that you would bring your justice here. Jeremiah 22, 3 says, This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Do not wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. Father, we commit to standing with the grief, to standing with and grieving with the oppressed. Father, I pray that we would be a church that does what is right and just. I pray that we would do what we can to rescue innocent people from the hands of the oppressor. Father, help us to do no wrong or violence to others. God, I pray that you would use our awareness of what's happening. Use that awareness and move us into action, God. We don't want to just know about things, God, but we want to do something in response to them. And so I pray, Hosea 12, 6 over us. So you, by the help of your God, God, with your help we can, return and hold fast to love and justice. God, I pray that we would wait continually for you. God, help move us to action. With your help, we can do it. We can hold fast to love. We can hold fast to justice, God. And so I pray, Psalm 82, 3 and 4, deliver us, O God. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. God, I pray that you would deliver us from the hands of the wicked. We know that you have ultimately defeated sin and death. We know the truth of the gospel. We know that Jesus was innocent himself and shed blood, God. We know our Savior has endured everything that we ever will. And so, Father, I pray for us that we would cling tightly to the gospel, that we would cling tightly to Jesus, that we would seek your justice and peace here on earth, that you would deliver us from the hand of the evil one. We have a real enemy, God, but we also have a real Savior. And so we just proclaim your protection over us. We proclaim your protection over our cities and our country. God, we pray over over people who are living in black skin, that they would remember that they are loved and valued, that their lives matter, that they belong here, that they are your children, your image bearers. God, we were made in your image. We are yours. And so I just pray over those, those other um, black and brown people who in many ways feel isolated and hurt. God, would you bring them in? Would you let them know that you love them and that you care? And God, for your glory, would you strengthen us? 
We know that you've heard our prayer, Lord God, and so we pray that you would do justice here and that we could be a part of that as your church. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I love you. I miss being together. And I just wanted to let you know that I stand with you. If you're feeling hurt or isolated or disappointed in any way, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to pray for you and encourage you. Um, Jesus goes before us in all things, and this is no different. He is with us, and he goes before us. Next week, we're going to be making the argument on why Jesus might have been the loneliest person. Um, so join us next week. See you next time.